The beauty of time passing in relation to movies is seeing how defined past eras were. And the 80s, especially horror, have something that we've yet to authentically replicate. Story. You f***ed. And Night of the Demons just may be one of the best hodgepodge examples of everything right from the decade. Simply the perfect concoction of 80s horror. It's a practical effects driven haunted house story, one that puts its focus on being gory, offensively funny, and all around horny. In its purest sense, Night of the Demons is a party movie. And in terms of vibe and tone, there's one scene that defines it. This is your typical teenage horse setup. A group of friends, a creepy location that seems ridiculous to visit, and of course a really bad idea. The genre tropes were, as they say, long in the tooth by 1988. And something that really helps here, and honestly seems to be the case at the end of any era, is exploiting the trends of the decade. So why not hold a seance in an abandoned funeral home? Our goth queen Angela gathers a crew of misfits for an oddly selective party. And real quick, I'm not sure how much of this aspect is tongue in cheek, but uh, <laughs> I love that nobody here seems to be friends. It's not a group of old chums with, you know, a few stragglers. No, no, no. But a handful of pairings that don't seem to connect with anyone else, outside of being basically aware that they exist. Of course, the seance goes to shit, and the demonic entity starts turning everyone into possessed monsters. Night the Demons is not about breaking new ground, but an exercise in understanding what works and how to do it right. Directed by Kevin Tenney of Witchboard fame, you know what, he really needs to get a bit more credit for giving Night the Demons such life. The mood here is directly tied to his wise framing and shot compositions. You know, Tenny wasn't one to coast his way through, and honestly, not that this type of horror needs uh, artistic direction, but it really elevates the fun schlock. The way a scene is framed can instantly set the tone. The constant movement and energy brought here lends to the snappy pacing and helps energize a simple haunted mansion uh, mortuary thing that our characters are in. Think the corridor point of view of the summoned demon to the low angle shots. Well, it's simple, but it does so much. We get rapid cuts and dynamic camera angles. Something as simple as the group discussing what just happened through broken shards of mirror. Dude, it's perfect. Tenny's artistic eye alongside the fun gore effects gives Night of the Demons a certain tone that is unique to itself. It's both preppy and punk, mean-spirited yet goofy, while being as horny and violent as the peak of the early to mid 80s were. And what's against the grain is, mostly, the story is stacked with lovably unlikable archetypes. Stooge is such a prick he may just be near the upper echelon of 80s bullies. You cannot take this bitch anywhere! Sal seems right out of the Bronx, yet lives in this quaint rural town. Hilarious and dickish, I do love that he actually gets a mini character arc here. Jay immediately ditches Judy, his date for the night, the second he doesn't get to third base. Suzanne is just horny and bitchy, God bless. And even Angela seems annoyed by everyone at her party. Outside of Roger, which is the only smart man here, he saw what was happening and says, I gotta get the f out. And maybe Judy. Everyone here is a jerk and makes for a fun night of death and mayhem. Now, thinking about this movie, I would probably argue the runner-up scene that I believe to be quite iconic and maybe the standout is Linnea Quigley's lipstick scene. The tone of the movie is firmly over the top, but this, this scene, this quiet moment of body horror feels so uneasy. Suzanne, who is patient zero in the demonic possession chain, is alone in a room and starts to use her lipstick to draw on her bare chest. Meant to be both sexy and eerie, it's for no one but us, the characters alone. Just showing that the entity the demonic force is more than just about killing, but playing with its food, if you will. And I know there's meant to be an aura of sexiness here, but uh, there's something just so dark about this. 
It's not using her at the moment to hunt or lure any of the teenagers, but it's exploring the human form. And in a moment of unhinged madness, she takes a lipstick, tube and all, and plunges it into her bare nipple. And also, shout out to the great effects artist Steve Johnson. The movie's fantastic uh, all around, and in particular, the realistic chess piece on Quigley. Even in HD, it looks surprisingly real. And though this is not bloody in any way, it's still uncomfortable body horror. And a little trivia, uh, Johnson actually ended up marrying Quigley here. I mean, it was a short marriage. And they met on this set, so hey, you never know. But it should come as no surprise that when I think of Night of the Demons, and I know I'm not alone, at the heart of this movie lies one of the more eccentric sequences in 80s horror. The defining scene, Angelo's Dance. Set to the haunting punkness of Bauhaus's Stigmata Martyr, it's transcendent, hypnotic, strange, and of course iconic. This is the scene that defines why Night of the Demons has become a cult favorite. Kincaid's commitment is the reason this feels so authentic. She made the dance up herself. As the demonic possession is overtaking Angela and his cell, disappointed that his New York charm isn't getting him laid, sits alone, and she enters horny, strange, and confident. Music kicks in, nice fear sticker by the way, and Cell does what anyone would. He sits in bewilderment, what the f is going on? Listen, this entire scene is both hot and discomforting, and Teddy letting his actress just wing it and vibe was a brilliant move. Dressed in a Susie Sue-esque dress, which Kincaid totally pulls off. She moves with an ethereal grace. Of course, the music is a brilliant choice that has that driving, catchy beat, but it's set around a chaotic and jagged rhythm. Angela's fluid, animalistic movements. Again, she's just vibing, but you're completely drawn in. And in a modern era, this scene would not exist. This is a full two minutes of wavelength, with fireplace lighting, strobe lights flickering, and drenched in the warm colors of red and orange. Nothing is gory, it's not scary, but it's directed and performed like a trance. It's the switch in the movie from ah, strange things are afoot to oh, we are f***ed. This is Angela's transformation into a vessel for evil. And though Quigley was the first to get it, this is where Angela becomes the de facto leader, the true antagonist. This isn't just a dance, it's a ritual. One that fully plays out and gives Night of the Demons its own sort of magic. Remember friends, don't be tempted by the dark-eyed sirens, even if their dance seems like a portal to bliss. Certain pain. 